My healthy habits. Surprise is the only emotion that requires an interpretation. Wherever we go, the real choice we, go we can change is what life to take. Thank you. Don't you just love to journey, to travel, to take in the landscape and be changed by it? I'd like to take you with me to look back at a transformative journey that I've been on, because I want to share what happened when my life took an unexpected turn, how loss can be a gift, and why art is a powerful tool for healing. Six years ago, I stood on a similar stage at TEDx Concordia U Portland, and I talked about using creativity to untangle the stories, beliefs, and behaviors that prevent us from enjoying movement in our lives. I created this piece, Untangled, for the stage that day. Untangled went on to hang at the Portland International Airport for six months, and then to TED Active in Whistler, Canada, where I was the artist in resident. Inspired by these experiences, I worked with a team to create the International TEDx Artist in Residence program, designed to give artists an opportunity to share their work and stories. It's an honor to present today as both program creator and TEDx Salem's artist in resident. Working with TED changed my art practice. I began using large-scale work to create opportunities for connection and explore art as a gateway for engagement. And then something life-changing happened. I was rear-ended while stopped at a crosswalk. Both cars were totaled and towed away. I went to the emergency room with soft tissue damage along the right side of my body. I was told I would feel better in a couple days, even though I reported feeling disoriented and not myself. As the weeks and months passed, it became clear that I was not getting better. In fact, I was getting progressively worse because I kept trying to carry on life as I had before the accident. Within six months, I was experiencing terrible short-term memory loss. I had trouble with dates, agreements, and conversations. I was irritable, prone to bursts of anger, and suffered from severe migraines. I couldn't stand light. I had trouble with the noise of daily life and had a terrible time with talking to people. The same person in the same room. I could only talk to one person in the room at the same time. Eventually, I had to wear dark blue lenses to tolerate looking at a computer screen or going outdoors. I couldn't read, watch TV, listen to music, do a puzzle, sit in a coffee shop or a movie theater, and I certainly couldn't create any large-scale art. And if that wasn't enough, I was devastated to discover that I could not think conceptually or paint abstractly anymore. Have you ever felt totally disoriented by the loss of your ability to think? It felt like everything stopped in my world. But as we know, life carries on. The journey continues anyway. Losing my cognitive abilities did radically change my relationship to most things. My body, mind, spirit, identity, relationships, community, space, and time. Seven months after the accident, I finally saw several brain injury specialists and was diagnosed with a mild traumatic brain injury, or an MTBI. I was told I could have died in that accident and that it would take me five years to fully recover. My brain had sustained the force of the impact. A shockwave shut everything down, just like a lightning bolt that short circuits your computer during a storm. Well, that explained why I didn't feel very good and why I couldn't think or behave the way I had my entire life. It's like when you're standing in front of the fridge and you can't see the ketchup right there. I was so frustrated, and the people around me got annoyed because I was the one standing there yelling, where's the ketchup? With an MTBI, it was hard for me to remember that I was wounded. And it was challenging for the people in and around my life to comprehend because this injury was hidden. It wasn't like I was missing a limb or my sight, and none of us recognized the way in which my brain was processing information. This led to an increasing sense of frustration and failure. I didn't know if I would get better. If true, what would my life be like then? How would my journey change? This felt like a huge loss and threw me into grief. 
I didn't feel good. I was incredibly bored. How was I going to stay sane for five years? Well, somewhere in the midst of all of this disorienting grief, I began to feel curious. Instead of just experiencing loss, I started to wonder what was possible. What could I do with the little bit of energy that I had between naps? What could I do that wouldn't be too hard on my body? I decided to start with something that I already knew, painting. And I chose something small and manageable, postcard-sized paintings. Since I couldn't remember how to paint abstractly anymore, I chose landscapes. Now, I had never been interested in landscape before, but I needed to work from something literal. And I also love nature. So I decided I would paint photographs of Scotland that I found on Instagram and made some wonderful friends in the process. At first, I could only paint for about 10 minutes at a time. It was like driving through the same landscape, but at a different speed. What I saw was vastly different because I had changed. My eyes would tire easily, and I had trouble seeing the photograph colors and details. I was exhausted after each painting session, but I noticed that each time I painted, the pressure in my head and the severity of the migraines lessened. I had stumbled upon a new way in which to manage my physical pain. The executive functioning in my brain took a back seat, and I could just relax. My first paintings were fairly simple. I wasn't great at landscape or watercolor, but I kept going. After about 100 days, my skills and the amount of time I could spend painting improved. And I noticed the more I painted, the more detail I could see, and eventually I was painting at this level. Thirty-six months after the accident, in fall 2017, 24 months shy of a prescribed five-year recovery, I started painting abstractly again. <laughs> I don't know what prompted me to try, but it was clear that my conceptual thinking had returned. And I also began to get curious about large-scale art, so I recently formed the Black Unicorn Collective. We are a group of artists, scientists, engineers, and musicians that creates responsive installations and shared experiences. And we work together on this piece. I wasn't involved in a formal case study, yet I know being able to paint abstractly returned once I mastered those watercolors. My hope is that research will focus on the power of art to reduce healing times for MTBIs and other forms of trauma. Often on a journey, it takes time to realize the gifts received from where we've been and what we've seen. Isn't it true the greatest challenges present gifts of wisdom? For example, the experience of a brain injury has turned out to be an incredible blessing for me. I found a profound respect for myself and my ability to remain curious in the face of uncertainty. I didn't know I had the strength in the beginning, and oddly enough, I have the courage to take more risks in the end. I was also given the gift of consciously participating in my own healing. I could choose where to place my attention and rebuild those pathways. And I'll tell you a little secret. I think I have a better brain today than I did before the accident. I also found a deeper regard for the healing power of art. My ability to generate conceptual ideas and work and think abstractly now transformed during this process of healing. I believe it is part of our human experience to overcome adversity and transform even when things feel crushing and unbearable. It's our journey through the darkness, remaining curious about the process, holding faith for the unknown, and finding blessings in the mess that allows for meaningful change. I'm delighted to share my first successful large-scale piece of art since this accident. I am living proof that art heals. Thank you for joining me today on this journey. May your setbacks transform and your wounds become your wisdom. Thank you.